Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is John Hutt and today we are going to have a look how I use and how to program Stream Deck for a music production. For those of you who don't know what Stream Deck is, it's basically an incredible tool that lets you automate simple or advanced tasks. It can be used for a music production, streaming, for video editing, etc. There is also different versions of Stream Deck like Stream Deck Mini, MK2, Extra Large and the new Stream Deck Plus. Today we are going to have a look to the Stream Deck MK2 which is the one that I use. I also want to mention that in combination with a mouse like Logitech MX Master 3, which is the one that I use, you can definitely improve your workflow. I also made a video about this mouse. I'm going to leave the link of the video on the description below. With that said, let's jump into the computer. Okay, so here we are on the computer. Now, before we jump into the Stream Deck app, I just want to show you how you can set up the MIDI plugin on the Stream Deck to communicate with your computer. It's really easy. So let's go to Utilities. On the Utility, let's open Audio MIDI Setup, double click, and then just go to Window and open Show MIDI Studio. Now, from here, we just have to double click Main Driver, and now we have to create our bus. So normally, by default, you have a bus one, but we have to create these two. Obviously, I'm not going to create now because I have already done. So you just press the plus button and then name it stream deck to do and do to stream deck and that's it really easy now we can close everything and now we have to go to our daw go to options midi settings and in here you are gonna find your new output and input so basically the one that you need is the stream deck to do because from the do you don't really want to send anything to the stream deck so go to your input enable it select a free port then go to your output select Stream Deck to Do and select the same port. Let's have a look to my Stream Deck. Okay, so this is my main profile. Later on, we are going to have a look to the one that I use for FLS Studio. But this one is also really helpful to me. So if I press this button, I have access to my main apps, FLS Studio, then my template of FLS Studio, OBS and DaVinci Resolve. Let's go back. I also have a timer just to have a break every one hour. This is a Stream Deck break. So basically it's just switched off. This is my update button. So basically it have three actions, Arturia, Native Instrument and Speedfy Audio Update. So let me show you. It opens my application in order to update all of them. Okay, the next one is Spotify and Oscilloscope. Okay, this one on the bottom is just a play and stop for Spotify. This is my project folder. Okay, next one, quickly access to my MIDI setup. Then I have a shut down button, which basically close all of my main application. This one in here is to eject my hard drive. This one, it basically changed my main sound device from decibel to black hole. I will explain later on the reason of that. My CPU. And then these three in here, it basically change my preset on sound ID reference. One for my Yamaha speaker, another for Genelec speaker, and another for Bejer Dynamic, my headphones. This is my profile for FLS Studio. Now, before we jump into the FLS Studio, let's explain one by one. So basically, I have a quickly access to OBS. Then I have my BST folder, FX and Synths. Basically, these one are my favorite FX and Synths. Definitely doesn't make sense for me to have all of my instruments and effects through Stream Deck. Let's have a look to the FX. And these are my favorite FX. So with a single click, I can have it on my mixer. I will show you later on. Same for my favorite synths. Okay, these two, Sequential Pro 3 and Sequential Rap 2 are my synths. Basically just enable or disable my synths on FL Studio. These two in here are exactly the same as before. Open Spotify and Oscilloscope and play and stop Spotify. Now these three on the middle are basically my solo buttons. So this one in here, it just solo the drums. This one, it solo the drum and the bass. And this one, it solo the music. This one on the left, it basically enable my master chain. This one, as I mentioned before, exactly the same. CPU and this one, exactly the same as before. In order to create your setup on Stream Deck, you are going to need a MIDI button. Basically what it does, if you drag and drop the MIDI in here, this is basically another MIDI device. So you can choose your channel, your MIDI control, the mode and the CC value. So the one that I use the most is a MIDI CC toggle. So just drag and drop. And in here we have a two option. 
one for activate and another for deactivate. You can write your title in here, then choose your MIDI channel. MIDI control change at the moment, we are not gonna see it. Your main CC value and your secondary value. In here, what you wanna press is 127 because that's the maximum of CC value. And your secondary value is gonna be the value that you have on this button. In this case, it's gonna be zero because I just wanna activate and deactivate stuff. Okay, so with that say, let me just, for example, go to the drum solo button. It's a MIDI CC tackle. I don't want any title because I'm using my own icon. MIDI channel 1, MIDI control change. I just choose 1 undefined. Main CC value 127, secondary value 0. Again, this is the one that I'm using the most because I'm just activating or deactivating controls. And that's it. So if you have a look to this one, it's basically the same. It just changed the MIDI control a different undefined. Same in here. Same for my synths, all of them are exactly the same. Okay, so the way how you can open your plugins is very easy. Click on an empty slot and then you are going to go on system and open. Drag into the empty slot and from here you can choose your favorite plugin. So let me go documents, image line, FLS studio, preset, plugin database, generator, 3x oscillator open and here I have it then you can also click on this little arrow and set the file let me open this one why not let me remove the name and there you have it now if I go to FL studio if I press the button there we have it pretty easy but for me it wasn't enough so in order to save time let me show you what I did so on my stream deck let's put as example a Juno by Arturia I create a multi actions basically what it does it open automatically the app and then I use a hotkeys command L to send it to a new channel F2 to rename and color and switch profile back to my FL studio so let me just show you how it works okay so here on FL studio let me press the button and here we have it. This is just my window for rename and color. Juno, accept, that's it. Now with the effects, it's a little bit more complicated. If you go to a new slot and then you try to use the open plugin, basically you can use it, but it's only gonna open it on the master channel. There is no way, or at least I don't know any way, to send it to a specific a mixer channel. So the way how I create it is if I select this button, there is two actions. One of them is a hotkey F8. F8 on FL Studio opens the plugin picker menu. And after this action, there is also a text. So basically, it writes on FL Studio the plugin that I want to open. In this case, Shaper Box 3. Also, I have to be sure that this option is always on because after writing this text, it's going to press enter. So what this multi-action is doing for me, let me jump to FL Studio and show you. If I select a channel on my mixer and I press F8, it's gonna open the plugger pick menu. And now if I write the name of the plugin that I want, then I press enter, look what happened. Here we have it on our selected channel. So this is what this multi-action is doing for me. Now let me show you with my stream deck how it looks like. Let me go to this channel. Let's say that I need an imager plugin. I just have to press the button and here I have it. If I want a delay, I press the delay button and I have a delay. If I need a 3T balance, I press the button and I have my 3T balance. So this is how it works. For my group section, master and my scenes, for all of them, I use the same technique. Let me show you how I program on FL Studio. So I'm going to take the drums as an example. If I want to listen only to the drums, obviously I have to put my music off. If I right click on the mute solo button, link to controller, and I just have to press the button now is on. Let me just reset this one. Let me show you how it works. And there we have it, only the trams. If I press back, everything comes back. Same with the trams and the bass. And same with the music.
pretty cool. Now with the master, I just have to set up a little bit different. So basically, if I go to my master channel, I have to link all of this controller to this button. But as I'm always using on my master tool, a gain staging tool, obviously I want to deactivate. So the way how I did it is double click on it. I link to the same controller, but I invert the mapping formula. That means that if I press the button, this one is going to be off, but all of my master is going to be on. And then the opposite. If I press the button again, all of this is going to be off and my gate stitching on. Okay, and last, I'm going to explain how I set up my reference channel together with my main audio device. So let's go back to a stream depth app and in here is a multi-action switch. So let me explain you. First time that I press the button, it basically set my black hole as an audio device. Then it also have a MIDI CC button in order to activate my plugin and also another MIDI button to send a play message to my FL Studio. And on the first page, I just have two actions, which are put back my audio device, decibel monitor, and another MIDI CC to deactivate my reference plugin. So let me show you how it works. Okay, let me play a song. You can play a song from Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you want. In this case, I'm going to use a song of mine. Okay, so this is the song. If I go to FL Studio, I can see that I'm not getting any signal. But if I press the button, here I have my reference song. And then on my reference plugin, if I change to original, it's gonna play my original song. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so that's all for me. Hope you like and learned something from this video. If you have any question, please leave a comment below. My name is John Hutt and I will see you in the next one.